Hello everybody, how you doing? This is the Starving Martian and you probably don't realize this, but this year, 2018, in fact, this very month, March of 2018, marks 200 years since the publication of Mary Shelley's novel Frankenstein or the Modern Prometheus. So, um, Frankenstein turns 200 years old this month, guys. Um, the, uh, publishing date was, uh, March 11th, which I believe is this coming Sunday. And, uh, so yeah, um, Frankenstein has for a long time been my favorite of, uh, the classic universal monsters, um, pretty much of any monster. Uh, I've always had a thing for the Frankenstein monster, and it might be because... I'm less of a horror fan and more of a sci-fi fan. Frankenstein is not um, supernatural, you know, he's not uh, a demon or a ghost or anything like that. He's uh, science fiction, he's brought to life, you know, through um, uh, electricity and um, the, the stitching together of dead bodies and this and that. And So, uh, so he's always been uh, my favorite of the monsters. I also like the fact that he is more... Um, a victim sometimes than a victimizer uh, and any evil he does is not excused per se but is understandable because uh, he's also a victim of society um you know people just have this irrational fear of walking corpses what can i say and so in honor of frankenstein's 200th birthday uh figured i'd dedicate a couple of videos this month and maybe a couple more throughout the year um to frankenstein to um to this wonderful creation of uh, Mary Shelley's. And um, before I get into this figure, let me just say I will be calling him Frankenstein and not Frankenstein's monster. There's nothing wrong with calling him Frankenstein. All right. In fact, Frankenstein is the last name of the scientist. And uh, a major theme running through the original novel is, um, you know, uh, abandonment by parents. Uh, Frankenstein is this creature's parent. It, it is an absentee father. And so being the child of Frankenstein, it's perfectly okay to give him the same last name. So we will be calling him Frankenstein and enjoying doing so. Anyway, this figure is Frankenstein from 1994's Monster Force toy line. Monster Force was a uh, toy line put out by Playmates um, in association with a cartoon series of the same name i have never seen the show uh but from uh, what i understand it pits some quote unquote good monsters against some evil monsters and frankenstein here is one of the good monsters and um so this is actually one of my favorite frankenstein figures um the monster force show was actually put out through uh universal so they were able to use the names and the looks of their classic monsters. Because if this wasn't put out by Universal, there's certain things, like anyone can make a Frankenstein toy, but only Universal can give him, for example, the bolts in the neck and the flat head and, and things of that nature. So, um, so let's get in a little closer on Frankenstein. And as you can see, he's very nicely done, uh, very nicely detailed, got uh, hollow uh, cheeks there, got red eyes. I like the shade of green they used for him, um, there's this very pale green, makes him look, you know, more corpse-like and less, you know, Luigi-like. <laughs> um, Usually, uh, Frankenstein figures are done in a really dark green that just, it's kind of ridiculous because no human flesh ever looks that green. Um, you know, it, being dead and sewn together doesn't change your coloring that much. But, um, but Frankenstein, we're going to take him off his base in a minute, but he does come with this little base. It's got his name right there, Frankenstein. And, um... So let's pop them off. We'll take a quick look at the base. Okay, so you have this little diorama uh, thing going here. You got um, floorboards with a little rat molded in there. Let's get a little closer on the rat. 
There he is. You have uh, this electric um, generator, which breaks apart. You know, so Frankenstein goes on a mad rampage and destroys the lab. And then this halves just kind of sandwiched together. They don't clip into place. They're just held in by the floor. And um, this background here with the laboratory setting, that you have to cut out from um, the backer board of the toy. Ooh, excuse me. And speaking of which, here is what's left of the backer board of the toy. So there's the Monster Force logo. You see this guy originally sold at uh, Walmart for four ninety four. It got marked down to four dollars. Wow, big discount there. And on the back, we have the rest of the lineup. Some monster hunters, the other monster figures. I do like that creature in the Black Lagoon. Uh, clip out card if you're interested in that sort of thing. And that's about it for the backer board. Here's the monster himself. And as I said, he's really nicely done. Um, he has your basic posability of a 1990s toy with actually a couple extra points of articulation. Um, his head can freely swivel. See, he's got some red stitching going on on his neck there. His arms, uh, this arm here, comes up and down and then has this uh, swivel at the wrist. Now this one's on a different kind of joint, so you could bend it up like this and get them into some odd positions if you want. But um, that has to do with his uh, punching gimmick, which is uh, pretty basic. You just lift his arm up and let him go, and there, and he'll punch things. Which isn't a bad gimmick at all. It's, it's the kind that I like because... Um, you know, it gives it some play value, but it doesn't interfere with the toy. It doesn't make him look funny. It doesn't um, hinder his posability. So I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, the legs can swing up a little bit. You're not going to get him sitting down. Uh, they can't really swing back too far because his jacket base gets in the way. But it's a really cool jacket, so that's fine. And I do like his jacket. I like his clothing. <laughs> this uh, yellow shirt and um, kind of olive drab pants he's got on of course his classic black boots and there you have it i just think it's a really good really solid frankenstein figure all right now as far as accessories go remember this generator we brought out before well these rods here are detachable and he can hold them in his hands like a uh, sci-fi lollipop. But uh, what you're supposed to do with them, if they're not in the generator, is attach them to this doohickey here. It's a little collar with these holes in it. So you just slide those in the holes. Like so. And uh, the idea is these holes on the collar are supposed to connect to the bolts in his neck. And it is slightly annoying getting them on, especially with this giant collar. But, uh, but then he can hold these. And the idea here is that these things got charged on the generator. And, oh, sorry. And now he's using them to give himself a charge, re-electrocute himself, get his uh, juices flowing by uh, channeling it into his neck bolts. It looks ridiculous, frankly. It looks like um, some kind of weird dog collar sort of thing. And so I don't, I don't display him with this at all. This is probably going to get lost in a box somewhere. Now, if you want... Hey... You can like clip this on top of his head. And, uh, you know, say he's listening to some music. <laughs> but uh, that's pretty useless. We don't like that. We're getting rid of it. All 
All right, and that's about it for the uh, Frankenstein figure from Monster Force. As I said, uh, Frankenstein, my favorite universal monster, my favorite classic monster, probably my favorite monster at all, considering all the others. So, um, happy birthday, big guy. Um, as I said, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of uh, Frankenstein-related figures this month, and maybe a couple more throughout the year to celebrate 200 years of Frankenstein. So uh, next time we look at a Frankenstein figure, um, I'm not going to tell you, I won't spoil the surprise. All I'll tell you right now is that, uh, well, as the tagline says, the monster demands a mate. So until then, this has been the Starving Martian. We'll catch up with you next time. Bye, everybody.